HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller Boys Hockey celebrated Senior Night and the latest in Hiller Winter Sports and also Matt Clark will get you up to date with the latest HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some town government happenings you should know about. On Monday, February 11th, there will be a special town meeting at Hopkinton Middle School. The meeting will start at 7 p.m. At this past Board of Selectmen meeting, they went through the articles. Back in 2017, Article 19, uh, the town meeting voted uh, approximately, I believe, $140,000. Article 2 was unanimously approved by selectmen and regards an increase in the amount to repair the Lake Maspinock Dam. That, that number, the original number, assumed that the town was going to be able to lower uh, the dam level to a manageable level. Um, I, I think in my discussions with, 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 with John, uh, they, what, what then happened was, as the project review progressed, it became clear that lowering the dam level substantially would impact the surrounding wells. And therefore, work now has to be conducted with much more water in the dam than was originally planned. And the request now is for an additional, uh, additional funds uh, that will bring the project total f to 250,000 for the repairs to be conducted. All right, it was 110. And now they're asking 140. Okay, total. An additional 140. Additional 140 for a total of 250. Article 3 was also unanimously approved by selectmen and authorizes funds towards a fire communication system project. This project is um, almost the first of its kind. Uh, relative to Verizon's request that towns discontinue the use of copper wires. Uh, and I recall vividly that when the chief came before the board of selectmen, the appropriations committee, a CIC, uh, that he did explain um, back in 2018 uh, that for the most part we will be designing this project as we build. Uh, and that is the reason why the amount of the project has gone up by 57,750 and we're requesting town meeting vote to approve this appropriation so that we can complete this project. It is related to public safety uh, and again the explanation is that this is the first of its kind and we're designing as we build. Article 4 was unanimously approved and is a tax increment financing agreement between the town and Lycan Biosciences LLC the article was approved at the January 29th meeting. Initial discussion took place January 17th. Science. Uh, like a bioscience is an emerging manufacturer of cell and gene therapies, very new uh, generation of uh, therapeutics. Uh, so new that there's only four approved currently, uh, but gaining a lot of traction. And it's, it's the next generation of uh, therapeutics. Uh, over and above beyond what we've seen before from biologics. Company plans to lead the way in manufacturing clinical products out of the Hopkinton site uh, for immunotherapies of cancer and other uh, illnesses. I will say that our, our sole focus right now is oncology. 
Uh, that's where the greatest need is. Uh, that's where we see the greatest need. So that's, that's where we'll focus. Uh, immunotherapy is on a cutting edge of treatments that are less invasive than tra uh, traditional cancer therapies, and they offer a promise of greater patient safety. Uh, this is personalized medicine for the most part, so we're using patient cells, patient's blood, uh, treat the blood at what would be the Hopkins site, send back to the patient very quickly with very little inventory or no, zero inventory, and then reinfuse the reinjected back into the patient, lights the patient's own immune system up to whatever. Uh, cancer they're fighting, breast, colon, lung, whatever the case may be. Also at the Selectman meeting, the Hopkinton Police Department introduced the newest canine member, Titan. <laughs> once, uh, once it was determined that we could bring back the canine, uh, it was, obviously we were very excited. Um, I don't know how many of you ever remember the late Hank Fredette and yes. Lucky, but that was my, my junior years here, and it was, it was an amazing time to have it. So when we were able to get one to come back, um, the late uh, Frank. Uh, Stanton fund uh, funded us for this. They gave us a grant for $25,000 that we can use over the next three years uh, to fund everything from training to upfitting his cruiser to equipment for him, veterinary bills, building a home for him at uh, Officer Secchione's house and so forth. It's been great for us. All we have to do is uh, submit our quarterly reports on it and continue with the training. Um, most of the training I'll let, I'll let Brian talk to you about, but um, it's been a great asset for our department. And, I'm very excited at the station. And before I ask Brian, I think when I spoke with you, had um, Jay, you explained to me that the town and and uh, Titan has been gifted a, a protective vest. Those run about nine hundred dollars. Yeah. So the grant allowed for us to purchase a, a vest, um, but through a, a generous donor, donator, um, had seen um, Titan on a I believe it was a Facebook page. Uh, fell in love with them, a gentleman out of Boston, and asked if he could donate the $900 to buy Titan the vest and it was accepted by the town and you know, Titan now has his own ballistic vest. Uh, we've been very fortunate with the outpouring from the community. We've had another uh, generous donate, uh, donation of Narcan for, for him in case uh, he ever gets un exposed to narcotics uh, in his line of duty. Uh, Brian now has a Narcan cat kit to uh, assist him. Excellent. And the donations keep coming in. It's, it's been a great outpouring for the community. Hopkinton Hillers Hockey celebrated senior night before their Wednesday evening game versus Westwood. Here's a look. In keeping with the tradition of senior night, and on behalf of the President of the Park, the Hopkinton High School Administration, coaches and players, I welcome you to the 2019 senior night game. We would like to acknowledge the effort, commitment, and dedication shown by our seniors and their families over the course of their playing careers, both on and off the ice. Now your 2019 Hopkinton Dillard Hockey Team. Number one, all farmers. Parents, Lisa and Tyler. Number four, Luke Quinn, Karen Shepard, and Steve. After the senior night festivities, it was time for hockey. The 8-1 and 5 Westwood Wolverines taking on the 10-4 and 2 Hopkinton Hillers. 
Westwood struck at 13.06 left in the first period to make it one to nothing. It remained 1-0 until 3.14 left in the period. Well, up against Donahue. Zaporosius, shot there, turned away. And the front, Simon's trying to jam it in, and Rogers has a goal. Kyle Rogers off the deflection from Simos, makes it 1-1. Great play, that's why when you don't have the puck, it's out front, you're right there, ready for a rebound. Less than a minute into the second period, the Hillers took their first lead of the day. Cross your screen as Rogers leaves it for Walsh. Here comes Walsh on a quick break. Into the circle, in front for Simos, go Hillers! What a beauty of a pass by Walsh. Simos with a wide open net. Just a great play all around, a great tip out. The uh, Westwood had some good pressure on the forecheck. Able to tip that puck up the boards to send them away on a two on one. Less than a minute after that, Westwood tied things back up with a goal from Kevin McGough. Test by Fahey. Westwood looking for a shot. Fahey leaves it out in front. Shot opportunity here. Westwood scores. Kevin McGough with the one-timer. No chance for Thomas there. He couldn't see that with a thick screen in front. And then shortly after that, another goal for Westwood would put the Wolverines on top 3-2. to two. Over to McGough. And turned away by Thomas. Out in front, another goal. Wide open shot there by Healy. A great feed from Fahey. No more goals would be scored until 6.51 left in the third period. The Wolverines struck again to make it 4-2. to two. Three and a half minutes later, Sean Walsh kept the Hiller hopes alive. Simos for Walsh. Here comes Walsh. Racing up. Walsh shot. Goal! Sean Walsh with a beauty. At 3.20 left to go. The Hillers gave a nice effort in the final seconds of the game, but Westwood held on for the 4-3 win. It was a tough, well-thought-out game by both teams. The Wolverines now have nine wins, one loss, five ties. The Hillers, 10 wins, five losses, and two ties. Both teams have already clinched playoff spots. Still to come on HCAM News, the latest in Hiller sports, and Matt Clark gets you up to date with the latest HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. So when we first decided to go ahead with the fostering, um, we spoke at length to one of the behavioural specialists to essentially find a dog that would fit in with our lifestyle, and that we could truly help. He needs to be in a home where he can just have some love and some confidence installed in him. The first time that Arnold, like I say, pricked his ears and actually came to us and wagged his tail um, was incredible. It really melted my heart to think that he had become that comfortable with us and, you know, opened his heart up to us. Like fostering a dog doesn't mean that you have to give up all of your life commitments. It is something yeah. that can fit around your schedule. I knew it would be incredible to foster a dog and to see them go home for the first time. But actually knowing how much help that you are giving these dogs has been, it has been life changing. Please visit baypathhumane.org to join our foster family. Welcome back to HCAM News. The high school winter sports season is towards the end of the regular season. A number of Hiller teams continue to make the push for playoff seeding. Here's a look at the latest. Bengal. Possession over Cochran now. Now coming in is McNichols up for the shot. No. And loose ball collected by Puvacati. Brandon Kelly driving in. And it's st stripped away, oh. and then it's stolen back by Rosen, oh. and he slams it! Elon Rosen getting this crowd on their feet. On February 5th, the 9-5 and 5 
Hiller boys were just one win away from clinching a playoff spot when they battled Norton this past Tuesday. After leading 10-8 heading into the second quarter, the Hillers put up a whopping 23 points in the second quarter to outscore the Lancers in the frame 23-12. Brendan Kelly and McCallum Lind each contributed a pair of field goals in the quarter. The Hillers led 33-20 at the half. Back up to Ambersoni. Puvacot driving in up for the shot, no. Oh, grabs his own rebound, what hustle! Michael Puvacot. Norton got a few points back in the third quarter, outscoring Hopkinton 15-10, but in the end, the Hillers proved too much to handle for the Lancers as they netted another 19 points in the fourth quarter and took the game 62-52. It was a great team win. The Hillers had nine different point scorers. McCallum Lind led the way with 12 points. Brendan Kelly dropped 10. The Hillers officially clinch a playoff spot as they improve to 10 and 5 on the season. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, February 1st at 5 p.m., local artists and musicians gather to share their music and poetry in a special open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, February 4th at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod sits down to listen to Phyllis Proya share some of her poetry on a new episode of The Senior View. On Tuesday, February 5th at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Norton Lancers, live on HCAM Ed. On Thursday, February 7th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. And on Friday, February 8th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Dover Sherbin Raiders, live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers ice hockey versus medfield game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. Hopkinton Hillers Cheerleading hosted a chili cook-off at the Woodville Rod and Gun Club. A good turnout was on hand, and plenty of delicious chili was available to taste. HCAM's Mike Terosian was on the scene. Off for a cheerleading fundraiser. All right, and, uh, what are you raising funds for? We are raising funds for the team in general as a whole, for choreography, team apparel, all that fun stuff. Uh, we have seven participants and entries in our chili cook-off. 
Yeah, get, get out of the, uh, do the, uh, is there a prize for the winner? The first prize is $200, second place is $100, and third place is $50. My dad's in the contest, <laughs> and he's going to win. <laughs> And uh, anyone you want to thank uh, for, for this? Um, the local supporters of Hopkinton and all of the local businesses that supported and donated to our uh, raffle baskets and the Rod and Gun Club for providing the space and all of the cheer parents and team for volunteering today. Right. Right. Who do you think is going to win today? My Glenn. dad. My dad. My dad. <laughs> my chili. Chili. He's an amazing cook. <laughs> Love him. Had his chili before. Best chili I've ever eaten. Two raffle baskets, one day of beauty basket with several options if you want to read it. No, good. And then we also have a taste of Hopkinton basket with several restaurants in town for gift cards. And then we also have a raffle for this beautiful Hopkinton table. Awesome. All right, uh, what's your name? My name's Maddie Strickland. Okay. My name's Bridget LaCroix. And my name's Megan McClay. Right, so, Pat, uh, what are you doing here today? Uh, participating in the uh, chili cook-off for the uh, cheerleaders. Yeah. And you're representing the department? Hawking the fire staff? department, yep. Right, so, Hawking the fire department, bought all the ingredients, I put it together, and here we are. All right, so uh, tell me about your chili. Well, it is a uh, beer-braised beef chili with bacon. It's got a couple different types of beef. It's got some uh, cube chuck, and it's also got uh, pulled flat iron, and of course, Bacon, bacon goes in everything. Excellent. It's got a heat, but it's a manageable heat. And what is, uh, what is your uh, secret to a good chili? Not necessarily a green, but what's your secret to make, what, what makes a good chili? Just let it uh, simmer together and get all the flavors mixed together. Betcha, yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah, really great with the avocado. Yeah. Awesome. My daughter. It smells good, Glenn. Yeah, this is my daughter and my stepdaughter. <laughs> Uh, they're both cheerleaders for Hopkinton High School, and we're making chili today. Uh, try to take home the first prize. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of chili did you make? I just made regular beef chili with uh, peppers. Uh, it's kind of sweet, not too hot. So it's a little, it's a little hot, a little sweet, you know, and, just uh, right. What, what's your secret to making a good chili? Good cilantro, fresh cilantro. That's the ticket. So Ready, here we go. Very good. It's done well. I got bacon in there. I made it with beer, tomatoes, red and green peppers, onions, jalapenos. And I used chipotle powder to put a little smokiness into it. Um, it's not too spicy. I used um, beer in it and I put bacon and hamburg, red beans, you know. So say, uh is this a family recipe or something? Or? No, it's, I just take ingredients and I modify it myself. So I just get a basic one in my head and then I just add and subtract. My what, Like I took out the cayenne and I added more jalapenos because I don't want to make it too spicy. And, and what's your secret to a good chili? Just time. You got to let it sit. Everything's got to melt together very nicely. I didn't have time. I was going to do it overnight, but I didn't have time to do it last night. But. <laughs> So that looks like mine. <laughs> Five pounds of bison in there. Wow. This is triple B chili. Bison, bacon, and beer. And a lot of peppers too, but that didn't start with a P or a B, so. Is this a uh, famous recipe of yours or a favorite yeah. thing? Or? Uh, I make it all the time, but this one I actually Googled. I wanted something different, so I got a few ideas off the internet. Okay. And uh, what, what is your secret to a good chili? Um, a lot of peppers and slow cooking. It's all natural too, so gluten free. It's a nice good thick chili. Oh yeah, that is. That's perfect. Uh, I was asked to come do a chili cook off, so I was like, okay, that sounds like a great plan, a great way to spend the day. So, got some chili put together for us. And are you a regular chili maker by heart? No, not really. I mean, every once in a while we'll try a different recipe that we find online or something that somebody says, you gotta try it. And what kind of uh, chili did you make today? Well, today I made Aunt Betty's chili. It's a recipe that's been in our family for several generations. It's been changed a little bit here and there over the years, but it always seems to be a good, consistent chili. And 
what are some of the ingredients that we might find? Not taking any secrets. Huh? Yeah, no, no, no secrets, no secrets. Ah, uh, Tabasco, chili powder, grass-fed beef, not normal, just like uh, hay, and uh, that's it. And what is your secret to a good chili? Follow what the is, recipe. Follow the recipe. <laughs> um, like everybody, time, slow cook it, slow cook it. Tom Nappy here with Mina Barraf. Mina, you were recently at the State House and you got appointed to the Asian American Commission. Uh, can you talk about what the Asian American Commission is all about? Sure, thank you for having me, Tom. Um, this is a pleasure always to be with HCAM. Uh, the Asian American Commission has been in place for about 12 years and uh, the work of the commission is to advocate for Asian Americans in the Commonwealth. Um, Asian Americans are the fastest growing minority uh, in the Commonwealth as well as the nation overall. So it's about understanding some of the issues that they have, also their contributions to the community. Um, so that's the primary work of the commission. And I understand you got appointed as the commissioner of the commission, so could you talk about what some of your responsibilities will be? Um, I guess it's a 15 to 20 member board and uh, you know there are five appointing authorities. I was appointed by Senate President Karen Spelka and uh, I'm one of the commissioners. We have a chair Mr. Pralad and uh, we have a vice chair Kim Chong and uh, I will be working as part of the overall commission and each one of us can choose to work on some of the subcommittees and uh, you know I've just started I have volunteered to help with the unity dinner that the Asian Com American Commission holds every year. It's in May, and you're invited. Uh, and um, it's uh, one of the biggest fundraisers that the commission does. But also, it's about advocacy. We get key speakers and we give awards. So I'm helping out with that a little bit. I have also volunteered to help with the finance uh, and administration committee, um, as it happens with most volunteer roles, it's what you want to make out of that role. Um, uh, the members that I have met so far, they've been wonderful, very welcoming. Um, the chair and vice chair went out of their way to spend time with me, helping me understand. We also have an um, executive director of the commission, uh, which is a paid position, and her name is Jenny Chang. She has also been extremely helpful. So I am learning along the way and helping out in ways that I, I can. Uh, we get opportunities uh, where we get invited to different forums uh, or to speak for some of the issues. So based on needs,